Um, yeah, no, it's cool. But, but first of all, Peter, thank you so much for joining. This is absolutely no, great thank you to, for uh, having me. yeah, just to have a, a, have a quick chat and uh, get to know you a bit better, uh, understand uh, Tenderfoot Electronics a bit better, and um, learn a bit more about your story. Then, of course. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. So, well, yep. first things first. So, what brings a a, a young Brit to Taiwan? <laughs> well, originally I came here as an, an English teacher, um, okay. and just yeah. So I I, I enjoyed doing that, um, and then I uh, I stayed here long enough to get my permanent residency, and um, just as a yeah, I'm, I'm still here basically. <laughs> <laughs> so how long, how long have um, you been in Taiwan anymore. now? Oh, Blumenek. Um About eight years now. Oh wow! I think. Oh, that's that's that's, that's yeah. superb. That's superb. That's great. And then um, yeah. you moved there straight after when you when you first started your first job as uh, as an English teacher there. No, 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 no. Um, no, it was it wasn't my first job by any means. Um, yeah, no, I, I've done a few weird things. Uh, before <laughs> I was over here, I was living in Canada, um, working as a, a whitewater rafting instructor. Uh, so I was, I was there doing that. Um, Perfect. And before that, I was doing the same in the UK as well. So uh, Whitewater rafting yeah, in no, the UK. Okay, then that's a story, I think. Yeah, I mean it's it's totally a thing. Like it's a small country, but it's got some decent rivers. <laughs> That's true, absolutely, of course. And if you well, you've got more hills than we have here in the Netherlands, so that's absolutely yeah, true. Yeah, I can't, I can't <laughs> imagine there's that much rafting for you guys. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> no, 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 none whatsoever. And if we do start calling it rafting, that's the same thing that we call the hills that we do have mountains. So yeah, no, no worries there yeah, whatsoever. Yeah, hiking, mountain climbing. <laughs> <laughs> no perfect perfect and then um t tell me a bit more about your uh, when you were growing up what kind of music what was music like for you growing up um were you heavily invested in music or was that just something that that happened at the same time or no i mean music's always been like a, a massive thing in in my family at least mm -hmm. like uh my mum used to play the piano uh and had yeah had her own tastes <laughs> no, okay. she likes some good music um and my dad's always been in in bands playing bass and so like it was always it was mostly like prog rock um as i was mm -hmm. growing up in, in in the household um and then uh kind of like when i got into middle school um mm -hmm. i just discovered like the 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 huge variety of electronic music really and uh yeah, it just kind of grew and grew from there. Um, but yeah, my my dad was was well, still is into all sorts of weird stuff. Like he uh, he always loved Brian Eno. Um, yeah, and like Tonto's expanding headband. So that that's kind of where modular um, music, at least, like first appeared when I was a kid on on all those records that he. Oh, awesome! Had, unfortunately, he sold them now. <laughs> yeah, so that, so so you were already exposed to well that thing. Well, that's that's of course one of the the, the main reasons why we're talking today. Uh, from well growing up already. That that's that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, like mostly. Yeah, yeah, like and yeah, yes as well. Um, I think <laughs> Keith Emerson like, had a big moog mm -hmm. thing or whatever, but. Yeah, no. So yeah, yeah. pretty uh, pretty musical family, I guess. Perfect. And, and what was your journey? Because it, did did you start making music yourself when you were exposed uh, to more yeah. well, more broader electronic music uh, things? Or well, like I, um, I guess like a lot of kids, like you 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 start learning an instrument. So I I, I did guitar lessons for like a year or two in middle mm -hmm. school and still kind of like pootle around on it but never really improved since the age of about 10 years old i reckon um but uh but yeah as soon as oh when when fl studio was fruity loops like as soon as i first yeah. came across that like um yeah that was it and i, I was I, I was loving that so <laughs> making all sorts of like crappy electronic music from probably the age of 
12 onwards or whatever um and before that as well my my dad used to play around with some like midi uh software on his computer that i can't for the life of me remember the name of but mm -hmm. yeah um yeah i've been doing just nothing nothing ever too serious but just like always always tinkering around with like music and software and like mm -hmm. instruments since yeah about 10 years old onwards really i guess awesome and on, on on the website you um you also mentioned that you were into electronics um as well in in parallel to all of this so how how, how did that came to be um i think originally it was my granddad um uh -huh. like as he I, you know what i i'm not totally sure what like he did professionally um he worked for <laughs> the national the national grid in the uk so it's definitely like electronics um mm -hmm. background but he used to build these these weird little um ah like kind of, not like a test board but just these little play sets for me with um with like batteries and switches and motors and lamps and stuff like that so mm -hmm. i think from a really really young age I was at least exposed to to tinkering with things but like never actually got involved in um doing it more seriously until probably like six or seven years ago since mm -hmm. since i moved to taiwan like i've always enjoyed making things so it used to be like um like as a kid model making and then even just like modifying kayaks and rafts and stuff like that when i was a bit older and then yeah. uh, when i when i got to taiwan like some of the shops here are still like the electronics shops that we used to have in the uk like yeah. when i was a kid and probably like some of them here haven't changed since probably the 60s as well so you go in there and there's all these like weird components and different diy kits that you can mm -hmm. just buy for pretty cheap um and so yeah it's just like wandering past one of those shops probably like uh, six or seven years ago here and I was like oh I wonder if I can like get back into soldering and stuff and um, awesome yeah yeah that was that was kind of how it happened really <laughs> yeah we we don't <laughs> have those shops here anymore <laughs> either so yeah so I totally recognize that that's awesome yeah no, they've, they've completely disappeared in the UK like yeah, yeah. They, you just they just expect you to uh to either buy anything on what is it like uh, AliExpress or uh, yeah, uh yeah, sites like yeah. that but then again if you're in a shop and you can actually uh well just pick up something just uh, just feel something just uh be intrigued yeah. by something you're looking into just by browsing that is oh yeah yeah exactly cool. like because you, you see all sorts of weird stuff like um they've got kits for diy breathalyzers in some of the shops here and <laughs> like all sorts of weird stuff uh maybe drink driving's a bit of an issue here so <laughs> i don't know um so yeah no you there's always something to like inspire you in in these shops um, oh perfect i love that i yeah. love that and that is of course uh yeah, once you get what well, once that creative spark or that maker spark uh takes hold that, that that's one of the key things that i've i've heard and i've learned through all of these interviews is once yeah. that that bug gets released that's where where things really start uh, get started so so how, how did you then from from these diy kits get into the whole well okay i'm gonna i'm gonna start my modular my modular brand and start well, start I mean, shipping maybe. modules uh, worldwide <laughs> <laughs> that's a big that's a big leap of course um yeah um again like did you already have uh, um, a modular or a Euro rack uh, set up no. at a time? No, like I, I'd been using software for mm -hmm. years and years and years. Um, and I, I'm not sure what happened. Like, I think it was probably my second year here. Yeah, it was my second year in Taiwan. Um, I, I just saw a cool video on YouTube, I think. Um, of, of someone playing on a, a Eurorack system and because I, I before then I'd never actually really even thought about looking into to modular as something that everyone can buy and use it always seemed this like unobtainium kind of 
thing that, <laughs> that was like vastly way too expensive and just like too huge to house anywhere. Um, so no, I, I just stumbled across it on, on YouTube and I was like, oh, like bloody hell, like it's actually a thing that <laughs> I can own now. And now that I'm a bit older than I was as a kid listening to like my dad's Tonto's expanding headband um, mm -hmm. records, like I, I had enough cash to like get started. Um, so like I, I, yeah, I, I, I mean, as I think we have all experienced as soon as mm -hmm. you get into your rack, that's like all of your money gone for the next six months and you suddenly have a <laughs> massive system um so absolutely it so was, what were the, yeah. the first modules you picked up I'm, I'm just interesting to to hear what people's journeys are especially during okay. that startup yeah yeah mine um was a little bit dumb oh well, no it, not dumb at all like fantastic module but i hadn't properly thought about how to use it so the first module that i bought was an intelligel atlantis oh uh, yeah i and i got a tip top mantis case for it and then i asked the guy in the shop who i don't think really knew that much about modular um I, mm -hmm. he does but i i think he, it's, a, it's a very open question when I think a customer comes in and just says, what should I buy? Yeah. Um, and so I think he just kind of panicked and was like, oh, you'll probably need like a, a buffered malt. So, <laughs> so I, I left the shop with an Atlantis and a buffered malt and nothing to sequence <laughs> it with. Um, so I was, I was making a lot of the, um, I think IntelliGel in, in the back of the, the Atlantis manual, they give you a lot of patch tips. Yeah. And so I, I was just doing all like the, uh, the self patch one module things that you can do with that for about two weeks and then realized that I should probably go back and buy the, uh, the metropolis that was sitting next to it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I, I ended up with a, an Atlantis and a metropolis. Um, and yeah, that did me good for a, probably about a month or two and then it just it was a slippery slope yeah like a really slippery slope. but you did have a well you, you did have access to a good shop that had these things uh, uh yeah on stock and everything that that helps <coughs> yeah like digilog in taipei um mm -hmm. is a really good shop actually like the the people that work there the owner's great really friendly um and they're great at ordering stuff in um awesome. and just having a chat as well so yeah I'd, I'd be down there every couple of weeks um just <laughs> chatting to to the staff and figuring out what i should spend my money on next yeah yeah and spending which way then, too much money then, with them of course <laughs> yeah which which i'm sure they appreciated um but uh but yeah i was eating beans for a good couple of months but <laughs> But then, uh, yeah, that that encouraged me to to really get into um, buying synth DIY kits from Thunk mostly. Okay. Um, yeah. So to save money, but still like feed the habit, I guess. Uh, I was I was spending more and more money, getting like maybe one kit a month um, mm -hmm. from Thunk. Built up like the the oh, what was. I think the first thing I probably built was the uh, Turing machine. Yeah, it was a Turing nice, machine. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, great module. Uh, and then some 4MS things. Uh, and then while they were still making them, I managed to get hold of the uh, the Hex Inverter Mutant Drums DIY kits, mm -hmm. which are, like, fantastic. And then, ag again, like was spending way too much money on that so uh, <laughs> that's when that's when it it like it hit me i was like oh maybe i should try making something from scratch myself and yeah and, and save some money doing it that way so it, it was it, it wasn't so much uh i want to start a, a synth brand at all it was like i want to save money <laughs> yeah and, as you and, said you want to keep the, feeding your habit and that that then yeah, exactly. out of necessity was born yeah <laughs> yeah and but then like thankfully there are enough people that that were also interested in getting hold of 
the the first few little things that I made that I, I think that's where the the idea was like initially like seeded I guess yeah mm -hmm. and then so so what were the the first couple of modules that that you uh that you that you started to build yourself from scratch or the uh the lattice sequencer was um was really i think the first thing that i uh, i actually had a proper go at um before that I'd, I'd made all sorts of just like passive um like passive multiples and mm -hmm. loads of things with vac trolls um awesome yeah yeah like um like a passive low pass gate and stuff like that mm -hmm. um but, but yeah no as, as far as like the first proper idea that i that i wanted to develop it was it was the lattice sequencer and then the the cells like keypad that expanded onto that yeah um awesome yeah but a, a load of crap as well <laughs> I, I, I mean no, that, I, I that's think the, you, that's the way right yeah, you are you need part, to it's uh, part of the, yeah it's part of the process <laughs> <laughs> but that's of course and that that's something that you do hear back from, from others as well where you say okay well you, you, you yeah. first need to get your hang of it and then you uh you hit something that is well that that's really well um well received by the community and and, and you build on top of that and and would I be yeah, right in assuming yeah. that the the lattice is was indeed that that first module the lattice and cells that really jump started it for you, or were there things that yeah. happened after that? Um, they they were the ones that um, that initially. Ah, see, I I never actually made that many of them initially. Um, but yeah, I guess they they were the 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 very tiny like foot in the door kind of bits and but it was mostly it's mostly been the 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 quad quantizer that has actually been the the mm -hmm. thing that i think has has been best received so far um or at least yeah there's there's the most of those in existence out of, out awesome. of the whole catalog is the quantizers yeah. um yeah and are you well, for, just just for my understanding are you uh shipping most of these to the to the us or more to uh to to europe or is it is, is it more local for you how, how is that distribution uh on a global it's, scale it's predominantly us and um and it would be uk if i could post anything mm -hmm. to to the uk at the moment without using <laughs> dhr um but yeah no it's it's predominantly uh yeah the usa seems to seems to be the biggest market um awesome yeah there's there's quite a few stores in europe though that that have stocked my modules though which is really exciting um awesome. but yeah as far as like people approaching me it, um like individual customers it's i'd say like 90 percent from from the states and canada um, great and the, the the local market in asia is like surprisingly small actually especially in taiwan <laughs> yeah because like that, that that was one great. of my my follow-ups is indeed so okay. could you tell me a bit more about the the modular scene uh in taipei or maybe even taiwan as a whole so what's the scene it's, like um oh wow um like i've never really tried to analyze it that well um, but um <laughs> it's 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 small um yeah. and very dedicated like um there's it's not for a while we were having um there there was like steam was building that's a terrible analogy uh, um, mm -hmm. to like um there were more regular like group meetups like mm -hmm. the, that was becoming a thing um <clears throat> and so yeah that there was momentum like growing with regards to like getting the whole of the 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 synth community together a bit more but then of course yeah covid <laughs> happened yeah um, and that and that, that and threw became, a wrench in everything of course yeah, yeah and that was that was probably uh yeah it only been building up well the the like modular meetups had been building up for maybe the 10 months in the run-up to when we suddenly all had to go into lockdown so it was very early doors 
over here um and that's yeah. kind of it's a shame it's kind of like knocked it back a, a few steps i guess um hopefully we'll be able to to get everyone back together and doing mm -hmm. doing that more but there's um i think there's as far as like individuals uh doing stuff with modular there's quite a lot of people here actually um, oh, that's and awesome. there's a lot of yeah there's a lot of like small events that go on um like someone will do a, a modular set in a bar or, or something like that mm -hmm. um so yeah there, there's a lot of performers and like people using modular here it's it's just as far as like a community that's that, that comes together like you see a lot of like modular meetups elsewhere mm -hmm. like it's not quite happened yet it was happening but i, I think yeah it needs to it's, <laughs> it's, you'll need to rebuild it so yeah, lightly yeah. yeah exactly yeah, yeah so, so what's what's the covid kit situation stuff. now for you have the restrictions been lifted uh like we like we see happening well almost across the board here in here in europe or are you still seeing some uh some remnants of that it's uh like taiwan's a, a weird kind of situation like they've, they've had the the actual virus under control like pretty mm -hmm. well since since it all started but they've never really eased up so much on the restrictions like we didn't have too much time where group gatherings were like banned and restaurants were closed and stuff like that okay but um but you still you have to wear a mask everywhere um mm -hmm. uh like every every the, every shop you go into you have to like scan a qr code get your temperature taken and all that kind of stuff um so i think currently there's actually no restrictions on on like group gatherings and events so like clubs are open restaurants are open it's just uh, yeah i think getting people used to that again is maybe <laughs> the next <laughs> step like people have gotten so used to like following the rules like the government guidelines that yeah. um I, I think people are still fairly cautious, um, which yeah is is why Taiwan's remained relatively healthy. I think over this. Oh well, yeah, and, and as you said, if that, if that's been physically, perhaps not mentally. <laughs> yeah, but indeed, yeah, that, that that's always the uh, the trade off, right? When you say, well, do you yeah, want no, to? Uh, and you've seen that in 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 other communities as well that have been really restrictive and it, therefore being extremely successful at at managing the actual outbreak itself. Yeah. Where you do it's, see it's more of the but... yeah yeah of course of yeah course. yeah thank thankfully um, like the Taiwanese government have been like really on it with regards to vaccinating people. So it's I I I think I'm right in saying that. In Japan, they had a few issues with um, like big breakouts recently yeah. because uh, the vaccination rates were quite a lot lower over there. So they they'd done the same as Taiwan; they'd shut the borders. In mm -hmm. fact, possibly even more strictly in in Japan. Um, and then once they started letting people in, it it, it broke through the defenses, of course, um, because. Mm -hmm. uh, vaccination rates perhaps i don't know i'm, I'm not a, <laughs> i'm not a, an expert it's no just, no but uh, it's always it's always good to well get get a better understanding on how the situations are but also on how the well the actual well let's call it fallout has been post covid whether or not we are at that point as of yet because uh, like you i'm no expert on that either but it's it's yeah. interesting to see how how that's been handled um well uh, across the globe so to say but again yeah <laughs> i always like what always happens during these interviews we digress and then we start talking about all kinds of things yeah, whether no, it's great. whether it's cuisine <laughs> culinary things yeah. or, or in these cases um <laughs> Glo yeah, glo global like global outbreak less, response less uh, strategies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, no, but that's yeah, that's that's, that, that's the reason why we do <laughs> that. That's the, <laughs> no perfect, perfect. But let, let's <laughs> let's go back to well, uh, to to your rack. Um, yeah, yeah. The whole brand name Tenderfoot. Yeah, I, I'm always uh, the, the first the first um, uh, association I had, and I think that was. Uh, old westerns and, and 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 native americans even but i'm not sure if that is right okay. in this case uh as well um i see 
uh i quite often get asked oh like were you a scout as a kid because apparently it's like yeah. a, a a level in in the boy scouts which i, I wasn't aware of ah, um didn't know it's either. yeah it's uh yeah it's not a particularly a great story behind the name <laughs> um like like i was a i was starting out um making modules and i i needed to think of a name i was like well i'm i'm a beginner i guess at this i'm starting out um and so i i went on to thesaurus.com mm -hmm. and just searched like yeah for for words relating to beginner and also my surname is is young mm -hmm. and so that like through i think yeah two degrees of separation it, it popped up on one of the lists amongst a load of other much more boring suggestions from thesaurus.com and uh <laughs> yeah it kind of just stuck out um and perfect I, I like yeah that. i went with it not not expecting to keep it but then it got to one of those points where you, you kind of just you have to keep it <laughs> and it's just stuck <laughs> like, yeah perfect you, yeah you can't you can't change it once once you've once you've done so much i guess yeah <laughs> And I'm I'm just doing a quick Google search, and now I know why I had that uh, that Western uh, association as well. Apparently, it's one of the uh, the comic books in the uh, uh, Lucky Luke series, oh, which which, which okay. I well, at least I I, I I watched the cartoons growing up. I didn't necessarily yeah. uh, read the comics, but I think that's that's where one my association came from. Okay. <laughs> Well, it could be another origin story for if if I ever want to tell yeah, a but that, that's the beauty. Origin. Well, if you can just um, keep on going and and just keep on creating origin stories, that's always great, right? Yeah, no, just yeah, and, like you end up forgetting the, the the truth at some point, which sometimes works out, I guess. Well, but still, just I I love I love the um, it's it's, it's not entirely random because you had a a tremendous approach to figuring out so how do i want to well, position myself and then playing playing with words as you said th th uh, th yeah, no, it, there was there was there was there was method behind it yeah. um, <laughs> but yeah like it was it was literally just for like the i wanted to to see what um when, <laughs> when i started printing pcbs i wanted to see like what it would look like with text and with some kind of logo so it was literally just for like the the first batch of pcbs that i had made up i i, I yeah i just needed a name to slap on them for yeah just for interest sake and yeah yeah no it, it, and now now it's tenderfoot <laughs> now it's tenderfoot absolutely so um just to, uh, also to go back a bit to the the actual uh, modules uh, itself. So I, I know a thing or two about uh, what you're currently working on. I I I've got yeah. uh, your uh, your modules uh, racked up currently. I've been I've been playing with uh, with with that selection uh, for a couple of weeks yeah. now, uh, and I'm oh, not cool. sure. And I'm not sure what uh, which ones are still under embargo. You might say, um, but yeah. hmm. No, 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 sorry. I, that was a just a random sound. Uh, oh, no worries, no worries. But I'm not sure <laughs> if, 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 if you want to discuss these these more upcoming modules as well. Uh, but I think that that's, yeah, that's sure. always great to, uh, to, to, uh, to dive in. Because the one thing I've been really, yeah. really enjoying is, on the one hand, of course, uh, the clock and the, uh, and the step sequence. Um, mm -hmm. could, could you tell us a bit more about where, where the inspiration for, uh, for those came from? Well, as far as the uh, the clock goes, mm -hmm. I, I've, I've been using a, a prototype of that in my system for probably the last four years now um, and just never released it. Um, like, uh, I, I just always found it hard to, to have a nice, concise, like, module to use as a clock source. It's either usually tied up in... Um, in like a bigger sequencer so i was yeah. using the uh the circadian rhythms um yeah for for like a couple years as my main clock source and sequencer but wasn't necessarily using 
like it as an actual step sequence of the whole time. Sometimes it would just be the clock source. And, and so that seemed like a, a, a waste of real estate, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, I always loved using the um, using clock divisions. So I, I had the um, the four MS rotating clock divider, yeah, um, which is like a, a an amazing module. But the fact that it it needs a separate clock source as well, like always, frustrated me. So I, I would I would want to use clock divisions, and yeah, and I didn't want to have to have like what I was using as my, my main clock source, the circadian rhythms always taking up space in, in, in the case. Cause like I only, I only had, um, yeah, the Mantis case at the time. Like, yeah. So I had two rows of, of 104 HP. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, the main reason behind that was that I, I needed, uh, something that was the size of the rotating clock divider gave like mm -hmm. some divisions, but then would also supply its own clock source if I needed to. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, so, and then, like, it, it was one of those kind of feature creep things over the last six months where I, I've added more and more little different options internally. Because um, the, the first prototype had jumpers on the back to, like, switch between counting up, counting down, and those things. Um, but yeah, no, I, I focused on actually just trying to improve my, my programming <laughs> over the last year and managed to get it to do all of those things awesome, like in yeah. what I think is a fairly intuitive way. Like, how have you found using it? Like the I've been um, at, at first I was a bit um, and, and this might might sound a bit odd, but at first I was no, a no, bit no. intimidated because I'm like, okay, well, how 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 is this going to work? How, how well? Okay, well, I, I, can, I can do this. I can I can press this. I can. Okay, well, so yeah, I, 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 like, I just try. I, I feel my you. way throughout. <laughs> uh, I always do the same thing that probably we all do, is and that is okay. Well, I'm not going to read up. I'm just going to uh, install it and I'm going to play with it and I'm yeah. going to learn yeah. and try and understand it and make the best of it. And and it, um, it took a while for me to actually, first of all, to yeah. figure out that the uh, uh, the dial, I, I could press that. That was one of the oh, biggest yeah. surprises yeah. for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was like an Easter egg for me. Uh, but once I got the hang of that, and that is something because I've, I've, been, I've been using um, the, uh, the ECD and the OCD from CM Modular for, uh, for yeah. a while. Uh, as as clock dividers and i okay. really start to enjoy those things and then when i started to play around with uh with with with, with your clock i'm like oh, okay well this is actually this brings all of that together and as you said well i'm not I, I won't need to uh, necessarily uh, partner this with pam's new workout which is typically my clock in my in my system yeah. and i'm yeah. like okay well this this can actually be something and that this is an idea i've been playing around with is actually create mm -hmm. a, a very portable case and i'm like okay well as you said if you yeah. need to be economical about your hp count um the modules that you bring in then this becomes a very a valuable uh module when it comes to well yeah. uh, value and usability in a well, uh, HP constrained setup, and then I think, well, okay, well, this is going to be this is going to be fantastic. And then, especially yeah, when I then started to combine that with the um, with the step sequencer, I'm like, okay, well, <clears throat> sorry. Then um, I'm like, okay, well, this is going to be something where you can truly start to well pinpoint into um, because uh, for me, I don't have any sort of um, theoretical background in music creation, music theory, or whatsoever. Uh, okay. But I'm, I'm been, I've been le uh, reading up and um, <laughs> trying to play some catch up there for the last year or so. So one of the other things that I've been playing around previously is a lot with uh, Euclidean rhythms, those kind of things. Yeah. And what I like about the the way and the um, the user interface for the step sequencer is, of course, okay. Well, hey, mm -hmm. I can just do all of these fills all together at the same time and I can just uh, really pinpoint and create the, the actual rhythms that I uh, that I want or that I had in, in, in mind for the, for all of these and that is very um, let's say 
for someone without the theoretical background like myself, that's a very unforgiving approach because then you start to hear, okay, well, the thing I had in mind, <laughs> uh, scrap that, yeah. try again. Uh, but that does give you that immediate feedback uh, that's on the one hand very educational, uh, but also, as I said, it, it does give you the flexibility to achieve the things that you ha had in mind. And um, the immediate association I had or the thing that came to mind is and I mean this with the absolute best intentions is the uh, teenage engineering pocket operators because oh, okay. they have a, a very similar um, uh, reasoning behind it where you say okay well you have the the the, the flexibility to do it exactly like you want uh, in a very easy, quick way, and you get immediate feedback if something works or not. And that yeah. immediate feedback loop, that immediate recognition, that hands-on experience where you don't need to program something or uh, write it in a tracker or anything else, you know, you just get your your sequence, your rhythm is there immediately. And the yep. unforgivingness is indeed well, it, it, it's um, it really positions you to learn from that, and that is something I truly appreciate about that. Well, both modules, the expander as well, of course. Yeah. Uh, but then yeah, again, no. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's 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 just one of those crazy things that I I truly appreciate, and that helps me grow uh, in my understanding of modular, of synthesis, of rhythms, of music theory as well. And I think that that's also one of the things that uh, what I've truly been uh, playing around with currently is, of course, so with the um, the FM module, and that is uh, one of the things that is, oh, okay. the, that that's uh, if you then combine the, the radio the, tuner, yeah, the radio, yeah, absolutely, yeah, okay, okay. Because uh, if you then do something like that, then you immediately get something that is either rith uh, well rhythmically, yeah, um, or it just sounds like like nothing. And the the immediate thought I had about the radio tuner is, I think that we are at least here in in the Netherlands. I think we're decommissioning FM radio. When is that? Yeah. Um, I know, possibly bad timing for a, a module well, that yes or requires no. yes and no because... <laughs> analog FM <laughs> well months. no and, and the reason is because I what I'm then assuming that's going to happen once we free up the whole FM uh, uh, bandwidth is either radio pirates will pop up on that uh, immediately yeah. or they're going to free them up yeah. for well 6G at that time probably and yeah, potentially. I think it is by the end of this year. Yeah, well, at the end of this year, we're going to decommission FM here in the Netherlands. I know that well, I they've already done so in Norway. Everything is then going yeah. into DAB plus or DAB, whatever the um, uh, the protocol is that they're going to use going forward. Um, but I still think that just the even if you don't have any radio stations, then you'll still have a very uh, specific and usable noise generator. And that is, of course, something that uh, within modular will be always a thing. We'll always need noise sources. And yeah, that's true. Yeah. So I, I, I still think that this module, um, maybe people will have the same knee-jerk reaction I had. Well, okay, it's FM, we're decommissioning that, so what's going to be the, the application for it? But if you then uh, yeah. spend a bit more time and thinking about it, then you'll start to see, well, hey, hold on, but I've got all of these, I think I've got like uh, five or six noise generators, um, yeah. uh, noise generation modules uh, lying around. So this then becomes a very specific uh, but also a very, uh, and, and no pun intended with this, a very tunable noise generator uh, as well. So then, yeah, I think that this is uh, yeah. this is going to be one of those things where we're going to look back uh, at in, in maybe five years time, where we say, well, that was a that was a golden decision to uh, to get that in your rack. Hopefully, it could be the the polar off. But like, yeah, no, um, 
Blimey, yeah, no, I hadn't realized that uh, that the Netherlands at least were so close to to stopping all FM broadcasts. Yeah. I think the the UK is a bit behind that, and Taiwan is like I love Taiwan, but it, mm -hmm. it's still very stuck in the nineteen seventies slash eighties sometimes. <laughs> so I, I don't think they'll ever like get rid of FM radio here. Which uh, <laughs> so it's it's been great. It's been even if I have only made it for myself <laughs> it's been really fun using it here oh absolutely because um, because like o over here as well you get um there's well there's all sorts of radio stations but uh it it's quite common to to come across one that is people singing like karaoke broadcast live to the nation or at least to the local area so <laughs> you'll be uh you'll be tuning through and then you'll suddenly come across some like <laughs> old couple singing a, a duet <laughs> all out of tune and it's so yeah, it's fantastic. okay so it. there's a re okay karaoke i understand um mm -hmm. karaoke on television i understand because then of course you have the whole visual aspect of it but karaoke on the yeah. radio that is something i've what? never heard of before it's of course it's it's really? it's, it's well, a very cultural thing like... where it's embedded in in the culture of course the whole karaoke thing but yeah yeah it, it really is um yeah no it, I, I can't explain it it's just it, it's a thing here but yeah karaoke here is massive um and yeah like no matter what street you go down you're always hearing like someone singing either at home or like in a little karaoke club or something um awesome yeah no it's 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 really popular yeah no i should do a lot more sound recording <laughs> on the streets but i'm just Oh great, yeah, and the whole yeah, it's just it's just the, make, make the field recordings back. and yeah, absolutely because of course the sounds that you're exposed to are, are would be well would be gems for people who are not in in in, in your yeah no it's just location, very different to what you hear in the UK I guess like in the UK you, you don't get any of that you might no. get like a, a pub fight on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> which is also a uh, a field recording which is that can be used yeah, yeah absolutely no, don't, don't get me wrong like, no perfect yeah. and and maybe the one the, the, the one module that i've been using most is indeed the filter with the um uh, with, with with the switch around to be again more forgiving and less forgiving and uh, that, that's one of the key things that i always yeah like. more polite less polite yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 it, and it is exactly as as you describe that it's polite or not and i yeah. feel that just by pressing that button to go from something that is mellow uh nice and rich into something that is uh more overdriven um yeah more gnarly you might even say and just by changing that by just pressing a button that makes it extremely playable where you might say, okay, yeah, well, okay. this is this is something where you, if you um, so one of the things I've I've been trying to do for the last couple of uh, weeks is trying to figure mm -hmm. out uh, some more uh, performance uh, um, uh, performance techniques, and I think that yeah, okay, especially these kind of things where you just have okay, well, I've I've got all of the settings tuned in exactly like I want them, and I yeah. can just change the the sound with just one press of a button, and one of yeah. the the modules that really where what i combine it with uh as well is the um what, what's it called again the um the the ambit um clacking keyboard which is essentially like oh, okay. a, a small uh nine grid uh keyboard and it actually uses keyboard switches as well and it just okay. it, it just sends gates when you press when you press it and that is something that it makes it very expressive, especially if, when you then combine it with low pass filters, high pass filters, and all, and all other things, because you can do all of these really, well, performance staples where you just swoop in yeah. a, a high pass filter and then you just open it up immediately again, just do those kind of drops. And I think that if you then combine that with the polite, less polite approach, that, that is fantastic. Um, okay. But I digress, but I digress. Um, 
No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> and and as said, so I'm going to do a uh, for those of you listening to this and who might not understand a thing or two what I'm talking about. Um, I am of course creating a a, uh, a number of videos on the, on the modules we're discussing right now. Uh, but I did want to have a chance to uh, to pick Peter's brain on uh, on those modules too. Um, that being said, we are of course already at uh, three quarters of the hour in and um we will need to make this a bit shorter than uh, than some of the other interviews i'm doing uh but what yeah, i want to do peter is I, I i want to probably uh suggest that once i've done the videos we will probably do a, a follow-up mm -hmm. uh interview uh just going yeah, over those sure, modules in, in more de detail um and we can probably do that at around the same time as we do it uh, right now because well for me i i just had to set my uh my alarm a bit earlier than usual and, and so that's no problem whatsoever yeah. i've got i've got young kids oh, oh, they, can... they, they they always oh. they, they wake me up at all hours so no worries there whatsoever um but what i always do is i always have um two final questions and mm -hmm. the the first of those is if you were to look back and if you would be able to give uh, young Peter, when you started off, um, before you actually built your first module, if you could give mm -hmm. that person one piece of advice, what would it be? Oh, blimey, that's a that's a tricky question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, just like, oh, it, it's not it's not that profound. Just <laughs> just like <laughs> double, double check, double check the PCB design files before you place the order. Because <laughs> even now, I'll quite often, like if I'm if I'm designing something new and I'm getting prototype boards, like mm -hmm. I, I've just been working on a, a quad envelope generator thing. Oh, nice. uh, and, and there were about three or four errors and traces that for some reason I had just completely omitted from the board. So nothing worked. Um, it works now. But uh, but yeah, like just really just double check things before you finalize something. Um, <laughs> yeah, that measure sorry, twice, that's cut like cut really boring once. and not profound at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, but still, it's, it's a great it's a great piece of advice, and it uh, yeah, I, just, I, I it's, it's, it's the that. whole it's it's the whole measure twice, cut once thing yeah. rather than rather than measure once and cut a thousand <laughs> times and end up with sawdust but yeah absolutely perfect perfect and that always the, the last question i have is i've been i've been i've been fortunate to be able to uh, shoot a lot of questions your end uh but i do want to return the favor so uh what would be your number one question for me for you oh um oh and again, again, it doesn't need to be like anything a, profound, a, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. But like what what I, maybe I've missed in, in a video or something, but how did you actually get started with Modular? Because you were you were saying that you don't have much of a, like a yeah. musical background. Am I right in saying that? Like, yeah, what was yeah it no, that, absolutely. So yeah. That caught your eye and got you into it. It's probably a question you've been asked. Well, no, but it's always it, the, the thing is. Yes, I've been asked this before, but I, 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 I like the question because the my answer is evolving every time that I think about it. Yeah, that. no. Because if I if I go back to 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 an early age, I've always been uh, yeah. doing musical things. But the the, the one thing I okay. never did is I never learned. A, an instrument of sorts so i was in mm -hmm. a children's choir i've been in, a, in 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 heavy metal black metal bands those kind of things Sorry. i've done <laughs> oh yeah absolutely i've done i've done cover bands i've done um oh. i've i've always been doing those kind of things so as well. singing um yeah you might call oh. it that <laughs> Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> screaming perhaps screaming oh, screaming grunts in the whole the whole shebang yeah absolutely I've, I've, <laughs> I've got a decent control of my vocal cords so um but the one thing i i don't have is i have no sense of rhythm and i okay. am totally incapable of um 
of memorizing lyrics so i always was the i always was a bit of a front man that that had a <laughs> just a, a couple of p- pieces of paper in my hand with lyrics on it yeah. even though it was the 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 the, the, the gazillion time i i um, i performed which is of course quite well, <laughs> it, it does diminish the effects of being a brutal uh, metal musician <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I guess if you if you're projecting it harsh enough and loud enough, does it really matter? <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's a fair understand. point. That's a fair point. And then it does become a gimmick after a while. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. Oh, but what, cool. what actually happened? And, and, yeah, was that um, yeah. during um, I've always been doing that, but then of course uh, uh, I don't have any time to actually be in a band or anything like that uh, uh, yeah. even if I was more talented uh, or had any any sort of talent and what then happened was is I um, was making a lot of videos uh, for my day job on YouTube so I I, I really did a, a deep dive into um, audio recording uh, those kind of things I investigated I spent a lot of money on microphones audio interfaces and all of that um, and yeah. that that actually um, opened up. Well, l- like you were like you were browsing the electronic stores in in Taipei. Yeah. Um, I was then browsing through all of these um, audio studio uh, equipment websites, and typically those yeah. are then combined with music sh- with music stores. And mm-hmm. I I saw the. Well, you might call it a DIY kit for the the NTS one by Cork. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Which is um, well, you just have to <laughs> screw some things together, and you've got yourself a synthesizer. And I'm like, well, this is yeah. this is this is this is in the middle of COVID, so I was bored of my behind, you might say. And <laughs> I said, well, why not give that a try? Uh, it's uh, it, it's a hundred euros. Um, it's going to be a nice project to build, and we'll see if I like it. Yeah, and. I did, <laughs> and yeah, then I uh, cool. and then I dove into the whole. Um, then, of course, that rabbit hole just became deeper and deeper. And I I, I bought a couple of synthesizers, yeah. a couple <laughs> of desktop modules, uh, Cork yeah. Fulkers, those kind of things. Um, yeah, bought some really bought some Big B stuff as well, and yeah. then of course, once you start to investigate, once you start diving into synthesizers a bit more you will become aware of this 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 magical world that's called Eurorack or modular you might even say yeah, and yeah. at that time it's like okay well yeah I, 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 I've been exposed to the gateway drug um, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, I, no I need to promise myself I'll never get into the crack that is Eurorack and <laughs> After a while, you start to say, "Well, okay, well, it is, it is quite, hmm." But still, the things you can do with your rack, oh, I can't do that with anything else. No, no. so you start yeah, to make excuses for yourself when you start to consider. Well, yes, I, I will probably need to. Yeah, but I, I, I'll need to make sure that I, 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 I pace myself because I. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you start to make all, all these kind of excuses, and the excuse I made was, "Okay, but if I do that." I <laughs> I need to make absolutely certain that I don't go overboard. So what I then uh, well agreed upon with myself is everything that I buy, I'll start to make videos on. Okay, yeah, well that's that's that's, cool. that's a great approach because then you you have something where you say okay, well I need to understand it, uh, I need yeah, to no, master it. Really it. To slow down. Absolutely, yeah. and then I started to get in touch with 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 a lot of Eurorack makers, and I'm like, well, all of the discussions I had. Uh, were the things that I'd love to hear uh, anyway. So if I like to listen to well, what what are the origin stories of these people in Eurorack, why not record them or why not make them available to others? So I first off I started off in Clubhouse, so that was the the whole naming for the modular Clubhouse, and then of course as I said. Um, it then became infested with NFT slinging, um, crypto pyramid scheming, <laughs> self-made, self-proclaimed millionaires. And I said, yeah. okay, well, let's go to a more friendly <laughs> platform. And I chose Discord. And I also started to record the actual interviews because at first I only did them live. And, whoa, well, okay. that, 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 that's that been my journey for the last, well, it's March, so it's almost... Uh, a, a full year to the day, absolutely. 
Yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, it, I hadn't realized it was all like so recent as well. That's pretty exciting. That's really, really cool. Yeah, but it's still, uh, it, as I said, it's a journey and I'm, l I'm learning so many yeah, things. Yeah, no, of course. Okay, one yeah. final question and then I'll, uh, mm -hmm. I'll let you, uh, I'll have to let you go on your merry way. So, yeah, um, sure. your handle, Bang Kiel Boy. Oh, ba Ban Chow Boy. Yeah, so yeah. I, I, I live in a part of New Taipei City that's called Ban Chow, ah. and and I'm a boy. <laughs> wow, <laughs> it was it was um, it was just a, a dumb name that a friend came up with once, uh, and I needed to to create an Instagram account. Perfect. Um, I, I, so I I was just, already again, I just assuming threw something that like in that. There without <laughs> yeah, without much thought of again keeping it for however many years I've never had it. Um, yeah. If it works, it works, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Peter, again, yeah. thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to no, meet with me today. thank you for inviting me. Yeah, my pleasure. As I said, this is not going to be the last one. Um, for those of you listening to this recording, um, this has been a presentation of the Modular Clubhouse. Um, please feel free to drop in on our Discord channel. I'll put the link in the description down below. Um, have a listen to or have a well, ha, take 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 some time to uh, browse the rest of the channel as well. Um, if you've got any questions, please feel free to either uh, put them in the comments down below, reach out to me, uh, 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 Jasper at the modularclubhouse.nl, or just join Discord, join the discussion, and we'll be going um, deeper into modular music design synthesis and all other things that I still need to learn. Um, for now, again, Peter, thanks so much. Um, any sort of closing comments in these crazy times you want to leave the listeners with? Um, just, uh, no. <laughs> just yeah, just stay stay fit and healthy. Absolutely. <laughs> and, no, that's a great. And, that's a great enjoy one. your synths. Enjoy your synths. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. For now, everyone, hope to see you for the next episode next week, and. Um, I can only um, yeah repeat what uh, what Peter said. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you then. Cheers. Bye bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Well, thanks so much, Peter. I truly no appreciate no. That. Cheers for that. Yeah. Yeah. No, perfect. It was, it was good fun. Yeah. No, it's nice having a chat as well. Perfect. Nice to perfect. finally put a, a voice to the. Oh yeah, the absolutely, email. absolutely. <laughs> no worries there whatsoever. Um, so I'll be in touch. I'll keep you posted on my progress. And um, yeah, sure. I, I'll need to look into my calendar and see when when it's all going to fit in. Uh, but I do like the uh, the idea to do a follow up interview after we uh, uh, we've got some other videos that we can then refer to. Um, yeah, of course. But I'll keep you posted. Again, thanks again for your time, and uh, we'll be in touch. Yeah, sure. And if you have any questions about yeah, how I'll just drop your line. Works, yeah, sure. Just, no worries. Yeah, just same same as we've been doing. Yeah, no, it's all mm. good. Perfect. Thanks cool. again. All right. Cheers. Well, Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye. Bye.